Hello, this video is about projectile motion. I'm going to start by looking at these three real life examples of projectile motion. Here we have a couple of soldiers firing off a mortar round, which is obviously going up in this direction into the air. Jessica Ennis over here uh, throwing her javelin. And at the bottom here we've got a human cannonball who is being fired from this cannon and producing this beautiful symmetrical arc in the air as he flies through the air. All three of these are examples of projectile motion where the object in this case the round from the mortar, the javelin and the person himself or herself is the projectile and a projectile is defined as an object who is only acted upon by gravity. There are no other accelerations and no other forces acting on the object. It is simply accelerated by gravity. So that's the definition of a projectile. So let's have a look at what that means in terms of the physics behind that. Okay, so if the, fo the only force um, acting is gravity then we must ignore the effects of air resistance. So completely ignore air resistance like we did when we were doing free fall calculations. And if we do that, then obviously the vertical acceleration is going to be simply due to gravity with a value of 9.81 meters per second vertically downwards. So this is the same as when we were looking at our free fall calculations. And in fact, free fall is half of the projectile motion. But the difference between free fall and projectile motion is a projectile isn't necessarily traveling vertically downwards. So in free fall, the object is just traveling downwards, but a projectile is projected. That's where the word comes from. And it may be launched or thrown at any angle at all, either upwards or downwards. Um, it may even be thrown vertically upwards. So there is a range of, of takeoff angles. Now, the simplest one is to look at a horizontal takeoff angle. Uh, but we're going to look at various different types uh, later on. Okay, so vertically we have acceleration due to gravity, but what about horizontally? Okay, so if again, if we're ignoring air resistance in the horizontal direction, there will be nothing to slow the projectile down. And let's say it's launched um, at a certain speed u in this direction horizontally, it will keep going with a constant velocity in the x direction. So the resulting motion will be a combination of the constant velocity in the horizontal direction and the constant acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared downwards by gravity. Um, so these two types of motion will combine to produce the curves that we see when we look at projectiles. Okay, so in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to enlist the help of my little leprechaun friend who lives on his little leprechaun planet. And uh, my leprechaun friend has the capability of switching on and off gravity. And this is quite handy for demonstrating projectile motion because what I want to ask this leprechaun to do is to uh, throw or, or just drop various balls off the edge of his cliff. So this is the cliff here and he's standing on the edge of the cliff with his gravity switch. And these are his balls, and we're going to firstly drop one, and then he's, I'm going to ask him to, to kick one out or throw one out, out this way. So gravity is on at the moment, and, um, and so if he just drops the ball, it's going to fall down this way with constant acceleration, which is due to the gravity on the leprechaun's planet. Um, so what's going to happen is the ball is going to fall with constant acceleration. U is zero because he's just dropping it. And therefore, the displacement of the ball will be proportional to the square of the time because the acceleration is constant. So, effectively, S is proportional to T squared. <clears throat> so, after he drops his ball, um, in the first second, let's say it falls by one of these squares. After two seconds, because two squared is four, it will have fallen four squares. So, one, two, three, four. So, after two seconds, it will have fallen to there. After three seconds, 3 squared is 9, it will have fallen 9 squared. So we've got 4 there, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So after 3 seconds, it will be there. And then after 4 seconds, because 4 squared is 16, it will have fallen 16 squared. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's where it will be after 4 seconds. And then after 5 seconds, it will be 25. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. It will be right down here. So that's where the balls will end up as they fall. I'm going to do a little snapshot of each ball as it hits those various points. Three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. So that's where the, balls, the ball will be as it falls during its motion and at those particular times. Okay, well that's the first one. 
Now the leprechaun's going to switch gravity off. So now what we've got is a situation where there is no gravity at all. And we're going to look at what would happen in the, in the x direction if there were no gravity. And in this case, obviously, we're just going to get a constant velocity. So it's going to be projected at a initial velocity u, and that's going to remain constant. So the displacement is going to be proportional to the time. So we've got constant velocity, and so you're just going to get a linear uh, motion. So let's say for example that it kicks it quite fast and every second it travels four of these squares. So one, two, three, four. So after the first second it will be there. One, two, three, four. After the second second it will be there. One, two, three, four. Third second. One, two, three, four. Fourth second. One, two, three, four. So after five seconds the ball will have reached that point there. So let's put some balls in at those points there where the ball will end up at those particular times. One, two, three, let's move that one down a tiny bit. There. Four goes in there. And five goes in there. Okay. So this one here was with no gravity. Okay, no gravity and constant speed. This one here was dropped with gravity acting. Okay, so that one's gravity dropping the ball, this one's no gravity kicking the ball. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is get the leprechaun to switch gravity back on and kick the ball out at the same speed as he did before. And this is where the projectile motion really is, is revealed. So both of these things are happening at the same time with this next ball. It's falling at this constant rate of acceleration, but it's also traveling horizontally with a constant velocity at the same time. And when you combine those two motions, you see that it will go along four and down one in the first second. In the sec by the second second, it will have gone along by that much, and it will also have fallen that much. In the third second, it will have gone along this far, and it will have fallen to the same point there. In the fourth second it will have gone along this far and at the same time fallen as far as that point there. And in the fifth second it will have gone this far and it will have fallen that far. So you can see now the, hopefully anyway, the arc that the projectile has made up. And this is obviously the real life situation because if you do, if you did kick a ball away from the cliff, gravity would grab hold of it straight away and pull it down, but it would also, the ball would also carry on at a constant velocity in this direction. Okay, so the key point to get from this is that projectile motion is a combination of two separate motions, and they really are separate. So if we have a look at this slide here, um, the path that the ball takes is called a parabola. Now, you may know from your maths that a, an example of a parab parabola is a y equals x squared graph. Uh, and a parabola, a typical, I mean a y equals x squared, looks like this. We're just talking about one half of it and usually, particularly in, in the example that we, we had here, the parabola is upside down so it's a, a y equals minus x squared and just the positive half of it which is going to look like that. Now obviously because the y is the s, uh, in, or in vertical direction anyway, the y variable is s and the x variable is t there you've got your y, well it's proportional actually, your, your, your s proportional to t squared um, resulting in this parabolic shape. But the key point that I want to stress is that the vertical motion is completely independent of the horizontal motion. They don't affect each other, they are completely separate in, in, as, as seen here. Um, the motion of the ball horizontally is unaffected by the vertical acceleration and also the vertical acceleration is unaffected by the horizontal motion of this ball here. So they're completely separate. And when you're solving these problems mathematically, you must work in two separate dimensions. You must work with horizontal motion in uh, being constant velocity, and you must work with the vertical motion being constant acceleration. So all the variables that you have in the problem, you must split them up into the horizontal ones and the vertical ones and never put them in the wrong uh, box, if you like.